Hey everyone, Rogue Gold here, and today I wanted to do a video just kind of giving my thoughts on two big topics that are being pretty heavily discussed in the Division community at the moment. The first is the news about Terry Spear and Red Storm, and the rumors, speculation, and such that have popped up about the behind the scenes of Division overall. The second is kind of an offshoot of that, but just PvP in general, how is it currently, and then how this news of Red Storm's departure from the project affects it. So, Let's just get into it. Like what just about everyone else has said by now, I'm of course very saddened to hear that Redstorm has been off of the Division 2 for quote a while, as they put it. If you didn't see it, I'll put Terry Spears' tweet up in it on screen now. Terry is the creative director over at Redstorm, so practically the top guy. I've talked to Terry before and he's a very nice person, and I think that's a pretty widely accepted sentiment across the community. If you don't really know the history with Redstorm or why any of this is a big deal, they were the main leading force for Division 1's PvP and almost entirely responsible for the content and production of update 1.8 which was the largest post-launch update that the Division 1 ever had. They were credited by a lot of people for kind of reclaiming the glory of Division alongside Massive after update 1.4, and so they were definitely a huge deal to the Division community. Fast forward to Div 2, and we all kind of know how that went. They were at the forefront of promoting conflict and the new Dark Zone experiences, and as we all know, that didn't go over too well. It's pretty sad because I remember back when Division 2 launched, Terry specifically got a lot of vile backlash on Twitter, and it was really heartbreaking to see. He pretty quickly stopped engaging in Division-related interactions on social media, and I think it just added on to the spiraling decline that we saw during Year 1. I'm not saying that they don't deserve any blame for what we got in regards to PvP with Div 2, but I think people really need to look at the bigger picture before going and enacting on those levels of backlash. At the end of the day, Redstorm, and even Massive, don't have full control over their own IP. Obviously, they're the developers, the experts on their own game, but at the end of the day, Ubisoft and corporate are the ones calling the shots. I'm not saying Ubisoft demanded them to make PvP the way they did and make three smaller Dark Zones, but the community, especially now I feel, really needs to wake up to the fact that the devs aren't in charge. Ubisoft is. But anyway, another thing about Red Storm at launch topic that I wanted to say was that I heard something very truthful the other day from Like Butter that I wanted to add in here. He was streaming and got asked about his thoughts on the whole Red Storm deal, and what he said was that it's too bad that Red Storm didn't get a chance to fix their mistakes. And I agree with that a lot. I bet if Ubisoft hadn't shuffled them out of the rotation, we probably could have seen some real Real work done to PvP to turn it back around. I mean, who knows what we could have seen them do given the community feedback knowledge they had obtained. But sadly, we won't get to see that happen now, and that really sucks. Now, the final time we actually saw Terry and Redstorm prior to getting this news earlier this week was back on State of the Game just before TU6 launched, and they were there to show off and promote the new Conflict Mode team elimination. After that, it was a continued silence from a social media perspective, just as Terry had been doing since practically launch, which is why I believed and was saying in a lot of my videos that they were still on the project. I just figured Terry didn't want to engage with the community, and rightfully so, after the treatment he got back in March of 2019. But nope, they're off the project. So then that delves into the rabbit hole of the community's discussions this week. If they're not on Division 2, then what has Redstorm been moved to? The top two prevailing theories that people have suggested are either A, they're working on Division 3, or B, they've joined Massive's efforts in creating their upcoming Avatar game. If you didn't know, about two or two and a half years ago, I want to say, the news broke that Massive had been chosen to develop a video game adaptation for the James Cameron Avatar movie. Now, there was a lot of questioning back then, but it was never really confirmed how the development of it was working within the studio. Are there two different units within Massive, one working on Division and the other on Avatar? Or is it just one big joint effort? We don't really know. But Redstorm's departure has certainly reopened that door. As far as for what I think they've been contracted to, it's really hard to say. Some points the community have raised that all echo here are, is Division 3 even happening? And would it be this soon? I definitely don't think it's impossible. I see people say all the time that there's no way they'll ever make a Division 3. No one plays Division 2 anymore. It'll make no money. Well, in actuality, Division is a very profitable IP. Division 1 was one of, if not the highest selling new IP franchise ever. And while I don't think Division 2 holds any comparable titles, it definitely sold pretty well too. And when it comes to whether Ubisoft would greenlight another entry in the franchise or not, I think money is one of their top considered factors. Not necessarily the community sentiment after a few months or even a year after the game's launch. Launch. So there's that. Then on the Avatar front, it's much harder to speak to since so little is known about it. It's certainly possible that production is ramping up on it after two plus years since its announcement, and so UB is transferring more studios onto the project. It's also possible that it's still just massive working away at it. So are those really the only two options here? No. In fact, I have a third theory that I want to throw out to you guys. And let me tell you, if this actually turned out to be true, it could be massive, no pun intended, for the Division brand. It stems from some news that broke out online just about exactly two years ago. I'll leave a link to the Screen Rant article on it 
in the description. But basically what they reported and what several other outlets reported was that there was a rumor spreading around that Ubisoft had tasked Massive to develop a Battle Royale game. Now, obviously I just used the word rumor and that was used by the various media outlets as well because there's no evidence supporting it. It was simply a rumor based off of some insider information. However, if you take a step back and think about it, it would make some sense. Massive created Survival as a DLC for Division 1 and everyone and their mom could tell you that it was a success. People loved Survival. For a lot, it was their favorite part of the game and a big reason why they continued playing in years two and three. Now, I would say there were two things that held back Survival from reaching its perhaps greatest potential. One, you had to own the division in order to play it. Obviously, that's a barrier of entry there. Two, despite people enduring it and it having super cool mechanics and gameplay, it wasn't necessarily a BR. It had elements of a battle royale that people always wanted to see expanded upon, but it was holding itself back in some regards. The most notable examples of this were the fact that there was static loot drops, so you could just map out a route to collect all of your gear and supplies, and that there was no single winner. In fact, there wasn't much incentive to try and extract first, other than the extra XP bonuses. I think those two factors specifically limited the mode's replayability for a lot of people, but at the same time, it had elements like great gameplay, the balanced and fun PvE and PvP, the cool survival mechanics, the infection timer, and who could forget, the hunters. I'll go to the grave supporting the idea that the hunters have been the best that they ever were in survival. Part of the reason why is because you didn't have your min-max builds to fight them with. You just had the stuff that you'd scavenged in the mode thus far. They were a truly formidable and epic enemy to fight in order for you to extract and win. So that's Survival in Division 1, a widely popular, extremely original, and fun mode. Fast forward to Div 2, and of course we're getting a Survival 2.0, right? Nope. Not one mention of it. This was like the one thing that the community could agree upon was going to come in the sequel, yet it never did. And it's funny because despite how very few times the devs have mentioned it, the statements they've made have been pretty contradictory. Let's take a look at this clip from an interview Skillup had with Julian Garrity, the creative director at Massive, and Matthias Carlson, the game director. Credit and link to this video will be in the description. <laughs> and uh, I think my personally, my absolute favorite part of the division was survival. Mm -hmm. Any information on whether, can you confirm that as a feature is coming back or is that still one of those, hey, we're, 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 we're seeing what's possible. <laughs> Hand that back very, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> not touching that one. Yeah. You know? I love survival. Yeah, it's the best. So uh, we're not talking about it, but I'd be incredibly surprised if it doesn't come back well, to uh, we go. the that's division in Washington DC. Very exciting. Okay, that's great. I'm actually super happy to hear that. Like that's fantastic. I, that's, that's I think it, it's one of those things that because we split the community, it wasn't quite, uh, yes. it didn't quite get the shine that it yeah. should have. And I think it's a shame because totally. there was, there's so many great emotions and player mm. stories that come out of that mode that to give it a little bit more shine and visibility, uh, put it on a pedestal a little totally. bit, um, I think is, is something that we should be doing. For sure, for sure. Okay, so that sounds like as much of a confirmation as he could give that Survival was returning, given the secrecy at the time, right? Well, then we get to last November, or December I believe, and Amper Camper, who is a former comm dev, confirms that they have no plans currently to work on or release any underground or survival-like modes or content. You can go search Survival on Reddit and see the dozens and hundreds of posts on that. So what gives? Why did Massive change their mind? Well, let's bring it back around to the article that Screen Rant had and the BR development news in general. Now, I'm not going to try and comment on the likelihood of this theory of mine turning out to be true. I just want to put it out there because if it did happen, it would probably propel Division way back into the community's favor. What if... Massive and now Redstorm have been crafting a separate Division BR game. Now you might be thinking, huh? How would that work? Well, just look at Warzone and Modern Warfare. Warzone is a separate and free title that you can download and play. It's still the Modern Warfare game, it has all the same graphics, character models, guns, etc., but it's a separate client. Now you could just play this without the base game, or you can port on over to it from the main menu if you own Modern Warfare. So what if Ubisoft were to do the same? What if they actually made a free Survival 2.0 BR client? It'd be insanely popular. Look at like this. There's two things that people love in this world, survival and free stuff. So if you were to combine those two together, it'd be unstoppable. And so you could either play this standalone and get no rewards or loot, or if you own Division 2, maybe your matches reward similarly to Survival in Div 1, and you get a certain number of caches based on your performance, or whatever they want to do. Can you imagine how beneficial to the Division brand that could be? Not only would you get a ton of coverage and exposure on the new BR title, but you get a ton of revenue from people trying the mode out, and who go on to buy the main game. I mean, it's literally a no-brainer. But again, we're talking about Ubisoft and Massive here, so anything could happen, 
or conversely not happen. So again, I'm not even going to try and speculate on how likely this is to happen, but what I will say is, I don't think it's impossible that Redstorm has been reassigned to help develop and finalize a free BR spinoff of Division 2. Maybe they're trying to get it ready for the launch of Season 2, or maybe it doesn't exist and they're just working on Avatar now. No one knows and probably won't know for a good amount of time. All we can do is hope for the best. Let's move on to the other topic I wanted to cover in this video, and that's PvP. It's pretty much in disarray right now. It was bad before with the PvP community being up in arms over the poor balancing since Warlords launched with True Patriot, the M1A, and all of that, but now that they've heard Redstorm is leaving, people are jumping ship left and right, saying there's no hope for it, no one's working on it, and just basically stating it's a lost cause, which I find to be kind of amusing. Bet you weren't expecting that, huh? This is where things are going to get a little controversial because I feel like my opinion on the current state of PvP is pretty unpopular. But we'll see. I've been having PvP related discussions in the comments lately and have seen that many share different opinions on it than me, so I figured I may as well just talk about it in an actual video. Hopefully you don't just leave a dislike and click off as soon as you hear what I have to say. I implore you to leave a comment if you disagree with me and tell me why. But I have one question to throw out. Does PvP really need that much work? Now let me explain before you grab your pitchforks, I'm not talking about PvP related content. Hell, I made a 15 minute plus video recently on how we need a PvP focused patch with a last in 2.0, a new dark zone, etc. So obviously I agree with everyone that we need new PvP content, that's been pretty clear from the start. But the people who are so outwardly upset about PvP right now aren't that way because of the lack of content. From the stuff I see, it's because the fundamentals and the quote unquote gameplay, you could say, of PvP. The time to kill, the the incentive, the enjoyment, the Dark Zone's viability and efficiency as a zone, that kind of stuff. Obviously a large portion of the people upset are because of the unbalance right now with True Patriot and Stas Effects and all of that, but I'm not really including that when I talk about the health of PvP. Obviously it's a part of it, but balancing is a constant topic within Division and basically any PvP game, so at some point you have to take a step back and analyze the other factors that make up the PvP experience because otherwise you're rarely going to find yourself happy in any game. There's always a meta. There's always unbalance except in Division 1.7. Some metas and balancing patches are worse or better than others, but overall you're not usually playing in the idealized quote balanced environment. On top of that, I think people are really blowing the current balance issues out of proportion, but that's a topic for another time. Like I was saying, a lot of the complaints I've seen recently are people saying that the DZ sucks, the TTK sucks, the PvP sucks, this and that and yada yada, and most people are saying that's all thanks to Warlords and TU8. They say the PvP used to be better back in the majority of year one, and to be completely honest with you, I I can't agree. I don't see how people can think year one PvP was better. Of course everyone is entitled to their opinion and I'm not trying to devalue anyone who feels that way, but I have to say that I feel completely the opposite. In fact, I've never felt more passionate or excited to log on to Division 2 to specifically go and play the DZ than I have in TU8. I just haven't. Now for me, there's three big reasons for that. One, the Dark Zone is the best it's ever been in the Division 2. And by this, I mean the philosophies the devs worked on bringing to it with their TU8 DZ changes, those being the loot incentive, the player interaction focuses and the rogue system reworks. These factors combined have legitimately made the Dark Zone a very fun place for me to play in. Like we've been asking for since Division 1, the DZ is once more one of the best and most efficient places to farm in the game. And when it has a targeted loot you want, don't even get me started. You can't beat it. And I see a lot of people saying DZ loot is worthless, and it has been ever since they turned it down from heroic to challenging quality shortly after Warlords dropped, but before you go on with that narrative, I want to propose you consider this. Even though you're receiving gear that's a lower quality, quality than if you were playing a heroic main mission, does that inherently mean the DZ is worse? While it seems the popular opinion is yes, I say no, because what the DZ has over any other activity in the game is its efficiency. You simply can't acquire the same number of drops anywhere than if you're clearing landmarks, opening chests, getting supply drops, and engaging in a little PvP, all in the dark zone. So sure, your drops aren't all going to be as good as the baseline heroic drop would be, but over time, you're going to get more items. More items that also have a chance to surpass the baseline heroic drop quality. So in that essence, the DZ is one of, if not the best farms in the game. TU8 ensured that. Okay, we've got that down. Let's move on to the second point I have for why I feel PvP is in a good spot, and that's the time to kill. Let me state this on the record right here, right now. There is nothing more that kills the fun of PvP in the Division for me than if there's a tank meta. I don't care if you're talking about Division 1, Division 2, or Division 5. I hate it. And you know what the majority of Year 1 was? A tank meta. Running armor everywhere, using a shotgun that could still two-tap you, and using two heals so that you never die. I mean, goddamn, how does everyone have fun in that kind of environment? That's part of why I was so demotivated during year one. It just wasn't fun for me to play at all. And so if that's your favorite type of meta or build, then that's fine, I suppose. But then why do you see so many people complaining about True Patriot now? It's literally the exact same build that everyone had in year one. 
all armor, a high damage weapon, and endless healing. Except True Patriot is actually better than those builds because the Pestilence doesn't kill you as quickly as a Double Barrel did. But yeah, your one was so good, sure. The way it is now, at least for me, the time to kill feels great. If you stack a lot of damage, then you can put people down fast, and if you stack armor, again excluding the balancing issues with True Patriot, you can be tanky except you lose out on damage. That's exactly the entire point of Gear 2.0, and that's how it should be, I feel. You should have to make choices and trade-offs in order to be really good at something. That's how you achieve balance. So overall, I like the snappier time to kill, yes. My third and final point for why I think PvP is in its best place right now is build diversity. You might think there's not a lot of it because because of how the meta is right now, but there is in fact a lot of viable things you can run. That doesn't mean they're all as good as one another or even the aforementioned meta, but has that ever really been what build diversity is about? Obviously in an ideal world, everything would be just as good as everything else, so you could use it with what you like and what you are good with. But I think more realistically, you want things to all be usable to the point where the right person can make the most with them and perform well. And I feel like that's what we have now. A combination of Gear 2.0 and the Quicken Time to Kill has resulted in a much more fun, dynamic, and engaging build diversity landscape. You can use just about any gun class except for maybe shotguns. You can use a lot of the available skills. You can use gear sets, exotics, and most all the brands, and everything works. You can make it work. Whether it's a dedicated skill build, or a headshot build, or status effect build, or you know, whatever. Gear 2.0 has really allowed us to spec into the specific parts of builds that we want to strengthen, and build something worthwhile and viable with that. Now, like I said, this excludes the current balancing problems, but I feel overall the dev's goal of creating a more enticing Dark Zone and a healthier PvP environment has succeeded. For me, anyway. Never in the year plus of this game being out have I ever been more compelled to go into the Dark Zone for fun, or to go experiment and make a new off meta build and try it out and have fun with it. And I think that says something. Again, if you disagree, feel free to tell me why down below, I'd love to hear why. Okay guys, well that was a super long discussion, but honestly I'm very glad to have gotten it out. I've been wanting to share my thoughts on PvP because like I said, it seems to have been contradicting with the popular opinion, so I'm very interested in seeing what you all have to think about it. Let me know down below your thoughts on the state of PvP, as well as your theories and ideas on what the reasoning behind Redstorm's movement off the project could be. Thank you all very much for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and be sure to subscribe with notifications on so you can be updated every time I upload. We've got TU9 coming tomorrow already, so that's super exciting. Hopefully it can further improve the overall game as well as the state of PvP, regardless of if you share my more optimistic thoughts on it or not. But yeah, that's all I've got for now. Until the next one, guys. Rogue Gold, out.